Here we've got Pelicans, the Catch 110 HD2 with a high drive system in it. I'm going to show you some of the mods I did to it. First mod I did was the, this is actually a, a deck line, it's a bungee deck line, but I hooked it to my uh, pedal drive, just tied to the handle up here and then hooked to the pedal drive. So if I ever roll it, it's going to, it's going to, what do you call it? Stay with the kayak. Now, the first thing, I, one of the first things I would suggest you do if you have a high drive system is replace that stupid Pelican um, sprocket with a Hobie sprocket. Buy the sprocket that says set screw and you can use your hardware from the uh, uh, Pelican in the, uh, I'll give you a link to my, uh, my fix at the end of this uh, video. Um, I added a fish finder to it. This is just a fish finder. There's no GPS, no thing. I don't really like it, but it came with one of my other kayaks. So I thought, what the heck, I'll just throw it on here. It's an Eagle Fish Easy 320C. I mean, it does what it needs to do, but it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have GPS. I mean, all I need it to do really is just to tell me what the depth is or if there's fish under me. You can spend upwards of $50 on a transducer arm or just do what I did for about $12. Now, mounting my transducer. PVC, baby. These are all threaded pieces. A threaded T, three threaded elbows, and a one, uh, a one foot long. This is irrigation. These are irrigation parts. These pieces come, they're six inches long. And you, the end piece has uh, threads on both sides. And then it has a bunch of these little pieces that go up here. So if you want to make it a different length, you can do that. I'm probably going to take the spare pieces that I cut off of these and cut it right here at the threads and move all this closer to where this thing, this whole thing is about this big. And then I can probably mount my fish finder over here. Now, what's nice about this is uh, you get in shallow water. So when you hit something, this will just move because it's threaded. Uh, if you want to get it out of the way, you lift it up like that or lift it up like this um, what's nice about using this uh, irrigation threading or plastic is if it starts to get loose give it another turn and you're tight again uh, as far as connecting it goes I'm just gonna I'm gonna kind of go for my battery to a female uh, like a lighter plug put it on here these are connected with uh, Three by four uh, track nuts. These are quarter twenty. These little things. I had these little a whole bag of these things. I don't know what they're from, but they work great. Uh, I rolled up my my wires and just put them on the the chair leg. Rocket launcher. The seat. Oh my God. The seat. I was in this thing yesterday for three three hours. I was fine. Um, I've tried other kayaks where I sat on just the seat itself and man, my butt was killing me. Uh, rocket launchers. This is one in a uh, one and a quarter inch PVC. Take your heat gun and heat up the, the, the last four inches, five inches of this thing. Heat it on the inside and on the outside. Uh, that way it'll, cause if you just take a one and a quarter inch PVC, it's not going to fit in here. Uh, Take this end, flare it out, use a, a bottle to flare out the end of it. Just, just heat up like the last two inches of it and shove a bottle in there, round off the edges. Now for the bottom part, just heat this sucker up from, from about here down and then just shove it down in there. And while you're shoving it in, give, twist it. Uh, I like to use the lettering so I know which way is front. Um, but what I did is I shoved it in there, and then I, as, as I'm shoving it, I'm kind of tilting it up so that it doesn't kink. I mean, I don't care if it kinks, but I just give it a little bump, and that thing's solid. I like to have a rod here next to me standing straight up, or here. I want it standing straight up. I don't want it pointing back. But what's cool about this is when you put that bend in it, you're actually giving it more of a... Look, now it's, it's out, and it's pointing out this way a little further. And if you put it backwards, you know, you've got a... I mean, it's almost the same angle as the one back there, but it's up here. Okay, life jackets. Man, stop buying those two, $300 life jackets. 
We'll get you one of these. It's called a snorkel vest. Uh, this piece right here, actually it shouldn't be through there like that. It's just, it's just. This piece goes down your back, comes up, round your crotch and snaps into there. The other one snaps around your waist. These things are 20 bucks or less. 20 bucks or less. You put that little nozzle in your mouth, blow about four times, and you're inflated. They come in orange, bright yellow, green, blue, whatever color you want. They're 20 bucks. You can roll it up. You can roll it up and stick it in the stick it in the hatch. You forget your life jacket, boom, you got one. Now as far as batteries go, batteries go. You don't need a big old marine battery, car battery, deep cycle battery. Go to Cabela's or Bass Pro. Get you one of these. Home Depot sells them, Walmart sells them. They're about $20. 12 volt, 8 amp hour. I've hooked a fish finder this to this thing, put it in simulator mode and let it run for four days straight. The thing barely lost two volts. I think it went down from 12.8 to uh, 11.1 or something like that in, in several days of, of use. This here, I'm not gonna take it out. It's called a wind paddle. Look it up, watch a video, buy one. If you paddle up wind, <laughs> or wherever you're at, if, if your truck is downwind or you wanna go up wind pretty fast, you take that thing, you clip it up to your two uh, pad eyes up here, grab the string, boom, that thing's just a big circle with a, with a clear section in the middle. And I mean, you could do the same thing with a golf umbrella. But that thing's awesome. The steering on this kayak is freaking amazing. Oh, I didn't tell you on my on my uh, transducer. All I did down here was I heated the heck out of this to where this got soft. Shoved my transducer in there to where it would it fit. Then I squished it with pliers so that it would get the little the little teeth that are on the transducer. And then I put a quarter twenty bolt. It's an all thread bolt with a locking nut on this side and a wing nut on that side. That way I can loosen it, take it off. I don't know what I would do that for anyway. But that was just something else I didn't mention. It's just that the steering on this thing is amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it makes super sharp turns. Uh, paddle. It's got a paddle leash on it. Go to, go to Dollar Tree. Buy a dozen of these... Uh, what do you call them? They're called uh, extra large XL uh, leashes. They're, this is one of the short ones. They're five feet long. And what I do is I take a little rubber O-ring and I slide it on here, shove this up onto the to this so that while I'm pedaling, it's not moving around so much. Uh, they're great. I put rubber handles that match my rubber on my kayak. Uh, I don't know if I showed you this, but when you're, when you're using your pedal drive and you're coming into shallow water, you kind of want to do this and of course when you let it go it's going to come back down so i made this bungee i had this bungee with a huge hook on it boom out of the way uh i'm getting to those in a minute but i take my scotty i don't know if anyone's ever had this trouble that i had but if you put a washer here and you start tightening down it as soon as this this nut gets here starts pushing on the washer it tilts this the washer grabs and that thing will not tighten from underneath anymore so i took some tubing some black heavy tubing put it in there and now that thing's in there tight another thing i did with the bungee that same bungee the other half of that bungee it's my it's my rod holder so i don't have to worry about my rods flying out you can do that anywhere I think what I might do over here is add a couple of pad eyes, like a pad eye here and a pad eye there and one on the other one, so that I can uh, leash my uh, rods down. The seat, I don't know, did I mention the seat? The seat is freaking comfortable. I rode around this thing for over three hours, or about three hours yesterday. No padding, no nothing, just like this. The only problem with this seat is the person I got it from is a dog. I scratched it up, chewed up. Chewed up all my straps. This straps. This strap was gone. That strap was gone. 
There's teeth marks here, here, and here, and there. There's teeth marks in the front. I don't know what that has to do with the kayak, but that big old Great Dane thought it was a chew toy. Now, rail blazer. Don't buy these things. I mean, I love the concept of the, the, the rod holder because it's got this where you can let the, the, the rod go through or stop it. You got the lock up here on the top. But this part, see that piece in there? This whole thing, the only thing that's holding your gear is this little thin, thin tiny piece of plastic on the bottom. So somebody didn't think it through very well. One of these broke when I had the kayak. I rolled it on its side to look at the bottom and just rolling it on its side snapped one off. The other one snapped off a while ago when I was just tightening it onto the, to the track. So, railblazer, this part good, this part bad. That one's actually broken too. I just shoved it in there. But uh, yeah, this is my Catch 110 HD2. I bought this kayak, saw how small it was. I said, I'm not going to like this kayak. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm just going to buy it, fix it up, sell it, flip it. But dang it, I took it out to the lake. I liked it so much. I'm rigging it, keeping it. So if you weigh 220 or less, get one. Um, the only time I got water in here was when I was stepping into it. And, and, and the, the water swished back and forth inside of here. But other than that, I had no water on the deck. It's not like uh, the Hoodoo Tempest. You start pedaling and this whole deck is covered with water. So. Okay, here's a little bonus video for you. If you're going to cart your catch, I don't know about the other ones, but my, I have the 110. And whenever I put the cart on the back, it just keeps sliding out. I tighten the cart and because it's tapered, you're going to set the cart back here. So because it's tapered, it just keeps coming loose. So the trick I figured out was underneath here, there's a hump. I think that's a safety feature for your for your pedal drive so that uh, if you hit something, it's going to go over that hump first. But I set the cart in front of that. The pedal drive, of course, is not going to be in there when you're carting it. But the trick to carting your kayak is... I, this, they, all, they usually have this little strap in the middle. I'll set it dead center. And I'll point this at the very back of the kayak. That way when I lift up the front and bring it over and set it down, I look through the hole of the pedal drive, line it up with this, and set it down. Just got to make sure that you've got this thing a little further back than the, uh, than the uh, <clears throat> hump. Either that or, I don't know, find some way to make these things more sticky because they're made of rubber, but... They slide real easy on the kayak. Uh, another thing is, I mentioned dog leashes earlier, about uh, Dollar Tree dog leashes. Get you a 15 or a 30 foot dog leash, 10 foot, whatever's good for you. Put it on here and just make big loops and then just strap it onto the, strap it onto the uh, uh, handle and you've got a, uh, a dock line or a tow line or stand up assist line whatever you need it for thanks for watching like subscribe and send me a dollar did you send it <laughs> thanks for watching